In this video, we want to continue doing our data analysis using RDDs so we can see how we can use Spark. Previously, when we were playing with our temperature data, the first thing that we solved was finding the hottest day. Actually, our first implementation found hottest days, but it did so with a cost. It did a map followed by a max followed by a filter. It took three passes through the data, but it could tell us if there were multiple days of the same temperature. We also used a max by and a reduce left. Well, the question is, what do we have available in RDDs? We know we have a map and a filter. What are the other options? Well, it turns out there is not a max by, but there is a max here that takes an ordering. Uh, also, there is not a, well, there and there is a reduce as well. So there we go. We could probably do this with either the max or the reduce. We just have to figure out how. Let's do both of those. So. First, I want to do a print line, and we are going to try to do max. Now, if we look at the details here, this max method has one empty set of arguments and then an implicit ordering. If our type T, which in this case is a temp data, had a natural ordering to it, we wouldn't have to pass any more arguments. We'd just say, give us the max, and we'd be done. It does not. And we could define our own implicit ordering for it, but you know sometimes I might want the maximum precipitation. Sometimes I might want the T max or the maximum T min, whatever. Uh, I don't want to really give it kind of a natural ordering. Instead, we're going to pass in an ordering. And this isn't hard to do in Scala. So I have my empty set of arguments there. Ordering dot by, there's a method here. And you'll see this takes a type T and gives back a type S, and it assumes that S has an ordering on it. So temp data doesn't have an ordering on it, but double does. And so I can just say underscore dot T max, and this will give us back our maximum temp data, at least theoretically. Uh, because max gives us back something it's not an RDD. This is an action. It forces stuff to happen. It will actually force the entire file to load in and it will force this flat map to happen. Because the filter here is a uh, transform and the flat map is a transform, literally if I comment out this line and I run this, effectively nothing happens. It starts up the server and then it immediately stops it. Let's see this run. Make sure it gives us a very warm day depending upon how long ago you watched the earlier videos, you may or may not remember how hot this hottest day was in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. But assuming that this works, there we go. 107. Yep, that matches what we had gotten previously using normal Scala collections. Uh, that's good. So we should also be able to do this with a reduce. So the reduce takes a function that takes two different uh, temperature data. And it should give us back the hotter of the two if we're trying to find a maximum. If we were trying to find a min, we'd get back the, the smaller of the two. So TD1, TD2 are some happy variable names for that. And then I'm going to say if TD1.tmax is greater than or equal to td2.tmax. Note that if I leave off this equal sign, I will find the last hot day, the last day that has a tied temperature. I'm putting it in there because I want the first one because uh, I'm pretty sure that's what the max wound up giving us. Else, oops, sorry, I want to get back td1, else td2. That closes off the reduce, that closes off the print line. That code is now happy. Obviously, this is a little bit longer, but of course, reduce is far more flexible. It doesn't just have to find a max for us. It could do a lot of other things, but we want to verify that this gives us back the same result. So there's the first printout, and there's the second printout. Notice they're separated by some space here because Spark went and ran some more stuff. But they both agree that the hot, hottest day was 107 degrees. 
and 7, 7. Yep. Okay. So we have duplicated the functionality of finding a maximum value. We could have actually done it this way as well. And in fact, if we do it this way, we could just copy that code over. The make string isn't quite happy here because it needs one extra step. That. Okay. Let's run that and find out. It should produce for us the two hottest days. So this is using that same max method that we did down here, but because we've mapped it to the T maxes, it's doing it on doubles, which once again have an implicit ordering already defined for them, so we didn't have to do anything there. So that's one, that was the last one that prints, that's the second to the last one prints, and here is the version that found both days that tied for 107. I'm gonna stop here, we'll come back. Turns out there is something that's happening in this code that's really bad. So we're gonna fix that, and then we will resume doing some more of our data processing using the RDDs.